All right. I kind of like, I so I'm a cat too, maybe. I first don't up, stuff. we are all cats. Okay. Um, we're all cats. Yeah. Okay, so let me put away this dispenser. So uh, we got, let's we, kick it off. We got a bunch of these. All right, so we've got a large uh, number of uh, different pin number counts of these magnetic connectors. Uh, we stock the 2.54 millimeter, 0 0.1 inch pitch uh, spacing connectors. Uh, but those only go up to, I think, about six pins. And uh, some people are like, I want seven, eight, nine pin connectors. Um, and they only seem to come in 2.2 millimeter. That said, they're a little bit more compact and they, and they do work quite well. So I thought I'd show them as a demo. Uh, so they're, again, they're not uh, breadboard friendly because they're 2.2 millimeter, not 2.54 millimeter. Uh, but there's a data sheet um, that we have uploaded. And uh, if you're using this with a PCB, you can solder this into a PCB. Quite Wanna show easily. this? Yes, sorry, let me, I'm gonna show all four of them at a time. Sorry, there's a, there's a party going on here. Yeah, why don't you, why don't we show this off? Um, okay, so uh, these are them. So we've got uh, six, seven, eight, and nine pin. So I'm just gonna show the nine pin one. It comes as two pieces. Um, you see there's two neodymium and they like to stick together. Uh, two neodymium magnets on um, here and on the back of here. Um, and if you try to um, connect these, they fight you. Like, no, I do not want to, I will not touch. They will not touch each other. They really, I mean, if you're extremely strong, maybe you could get it, but it really is hard. But then the moment you have it the right way, they just snap instantly together. What would you use for strain relief on these is the question. Well, you know, th what's interesting is they actually are quite, uh, the pins are quite strong. So I think if these were soldered to a PCB, um, yeah. I think that that would be strong enough to, to be strain relief if you, if you had something that was, you know, board to board flat. If not, um, there is this notch that goes all the way around. And again, it's in the data sheet. Um, you would injection mold or 3D print something that has the notch and the notch would hold it in place and then you could solder wires. So there's the two options. Um, I really wish that we could get the 0.1 inch spacing ones in this many pins, but they just don't make them. So we didn't get a ton of these, but I think for some people, these are still gonna be uh, quite handy. So six, seven, eight, and nine okay. pins. Also in the chat, people suggested heat shrink for that. Okay. Heat shrink, good. Uh, I think you need a lot of mechanical TPU, support. TPU, 3D printing as yeah, well. Yeah, 3D okay. printing will work. Okay, next up, uh, you know, we for a long time stocked um, this conductive rubber cord that we kind of use as a stretch sensor. And we had a couple people ask us if we could get it in sheet form. And I was like, yeah, you can. So this is carbon, uh, black carbon impregnated rubber. And um, we have it in two thicknesses, one millimeter. And then this one, which you can tell is much stretchier, is uh, yeah. half a millimeter. So I got- Not as stretchy. Not as stretchy. More stretchy. Very stretchy. And um, it's 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. And I think it's about, it's volumetric. Remember, it's not a cord. So there's volumetric uh, resistance of, uh, I think about 50 to 70 ohms per millimeter. Um, there's online calculators that let you kind of figure out what that means. But basically the resistance is not that high, uh, but when you stretch it, you'll see the resistance goes up a little bit. And you can cut this into any shape. So traditionally this is used for EMF shielding or gasketing or like whenever you want some um, anti-static conductivity stuff, but it's an interesting material. Um, I think it could be cool to cut or glue or attach or use as a ultra flexible conductive element um, that isn't thread, uh, has, you know, conformability. Uh, and it does have some stretch sensing capability, but you don't need to use it as a stretch sensor. Uh, to connect to it, um, you know, I'm using alligator clips uh, for this demo that Jelly uh, shot, but um, I think you could probably also use rivets or or snap connectors as long as you have some um, some fabric as a you know backing on one side to just give it uh, some protection against ripping. Interesting materials. I, I like to carry interesting yeah. conductive materials. Okay, next up. Next up uh, from Elkai, we've got these really cool soldering kits. These are great for learning how to solder. Uh, you don't have to be a science girl, but they are two science girl projects. One is Space Girl. Um, so you get it as a kit of parts. You see this beautiful PCB, um, which has a gorgeous blue and purple and gold design to it. You get two LEDs, a battery holder, and a switch. 
Um, now, in order to make shipping easy, we don't include the battery. We, we sell the battery. You can buy it separately or you if you have a coin cell. Um, but because they're, they're shipping restricted and you can't ship them air, uh, we want to make sure that people um, weren't forced to ship them ground if they, if they needed them faster or you want to ship them overseas uh, without needing to include the coin cell. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's also a biology girl um, and she has a beautiful golden blue teal um, uh, greenhouse where she grows her plants. Uh, likewise, it has a beautiful PCB with this uh, lovely silk screen art. Uh, it comes with two uh, rainbow LEDs, a battery holder and a switch. Uh, like the Science Girl or Space Girl um, pin, it does not include a battery uh, for easy shipping, but we stock the CR2032 batteries or use any coin cell that you have handy. Okay, next up, we got a few different types of these. Mm, yes, yeah, so we were looking at people who were doing model making, um, and a lot of them were using uh, basically ST LEDs on wires. Um, these are a real pain to solder, so we like that these come pre soldered and ready to go. We have them in a couple of wonderful colors. Uh, you saw green, you saw blue, you saw purple, pink, and warm white. Yeah. So these are the, I think these are the Green, blue, colors. purple, pink, warm white. And uh, when you go to the site, you can pick any of these. And if you want to see what they look like, not lit up. This is what they look like. So really it is an 0805 LED with a red wire connected to the anode, a blue wire connected to the cathode, and there's no resistor. So uh, keep that in mind, you'll want to, you know, you can, power itself a coin cell or something that gives you basically three three point three volts if not add a resistor but what's really nice is it comes with this wire wrap wire um it's very thin but it's just stiff enough that you can um move it around and of course we've got these beautiful demos um they are quite bright uh you know you just pwm them as a normal led and they'll fit anywhere so um really handy if you don't want to do that fine pitch soldering but you want to make a wearable or a design or something with just very small LED lights in them um, that are far away from a PCB. This will definitely save you the effort and they come in a pack of five. One warning, uh, there is no strain relief on the solder side. So um, be very careful. Um, when you hold them, hold them by the wires. Do not hold them by the LED because it's very easy to break off um, the wire if you're not careful. So just uh, use a little bit of care, but that's why we give you five. So maybe think of it as four plus a bonus one. Yeah. Okay, next up. Okay. This is uh, you know, one of the stars of the show, uh, which is um, an update to the LSM 60S33. Uh, we really liked that IMU from ST, but um, wouldn't you know it, it's affected by the chip shortage and um, discontinued. So instead, uh, we're using the LSM 60S3 TRC. Uh, which is an IMU that has accelerometer, that's A, and gyroscope uh, G, and so you can see if I hold it still, it's measuring about uh, 10 meters per second per second, and if I twist it, uh, the gyro goes a little bonkers. Um, so this IMU, it's, it's considered entry level, but it's still very good. Um, it is pin compatible with the LSM-6 DSOX, uh, that one, and the IS, ISM 330, those are higher level, higher uh, capability um, and precision IMUs. But this one is great for if you just want to do basic IMU detection, um, motion, twisting, and then add a magnetometer and you can do uh, full uh, attitude and orientation. Uh, it's inexpensive. So basically, if you are looking for uh, a, the lowest cost accelerometer gyro IMU on the market, at this time, uh, this is it. And uh, thankfully it works wonderfully with our Arduino and CircuitPython library code. Uh, someone contributed CircuitPython support and we added Arduino support last week. Um, it's also got some other cool things. Uh, just one quick demo is uh, it has a step counter, a pedometer. Uh, so if you start walking um, with this, you'll see it counts the steps as if you were walking with a pedometer. Um, so like projects like this where you want to do step counting or shake detection, all that's built into the chip. You don't have to do it, the detection on the microcontroller. It's done inside. And uh, of course it comes with STEM QT, so it's plug and play. Uh, no soldering required if you want to use it with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino or Cutie Pi, Raspberry Pi Pico, etc. All those will work wonderfully. All right. And the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady, our community, our customers, our staff, and everyone 
who makes this thing go is Raspberry Pi has an exciting lineup of new things that just came out. There's Pico H's, there's Pico WH's, there's Pico W's. Lady Ada, what are the new things from Raspberry Pi that just dropped? Okay, so the most exciting one is the Pico W, which people have apparently started calling the Pi-Cow or the Pi-Cow, um, because it's Pico with a W at the end. And this is just like the RP2040 Pico uh, development board that Raspberry Pi released uh, a little bit more than a year ago, except um, now instead of that bottom side of the board being kind of empty when having Raspberry Pi logo, it now has a wireless module. It's under that metal tin, and it's the same wireless module that's used in uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so it's a very powerful and capable 2.4 gigahertz radio, and it's going to onboard antenna. Um, that module can do Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth Low Energy, and Wi-Fi, although at the time of launch, uh, it is only coming with Wi-Fi support in MicroPython and the Pico SDK. Uh, it is pin compatible with the Pico, but there's a couple little changes. I'm still learning all of them because, you know, I just got my hand on one, but for example, the LED uh, is not connected to a GPIO. It's connected to the module. The module uses this um, SPI interface to communicate. Um, so there's a couple pins that are shared, um, that are not available, check the documentation. I don't remember the exact uh, numbers of them, um, but it comes with MicroPython support out of the box. And again, Pico SDK, we're looking at CircuitPython support. Um, the drivers were just released uh, publicly, so we can actually take a look at what it would take uh, to do that port. Um, but basically, you know, it's a very inexpensive board that has a powerful dual Cortex-M0 chip, Wi-Fi, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and then the future will have uh, Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy capability. Uh, and it's pin compatible with existing Pico boards, so you can just pick out. And what's this one? Okay, there's also another board that's been released. This is the Pico H. Um, so this is a slight respin of the classic Pico. It no longer has castellated pads. Instead, it has uh, pin headers. So if you don't want to solder, um, you can just plug this right in. Also, the debug port has been changed from headers to a um, JST SH three pin connector. Uh, we'll try to get a cable so people can uh, can get that um, used soon. But basically, you know, if you have a if you have a project or you want to use it with a breadboard, you don't want to solder. Um, you know, it's only a dollar more, and it comes ready to go, uh, pre tested, pre soldered, uh, plug into a breadboard or um, into sockets. Uh, or a perm proto, what have you. And then there's also going to be, not shown here, a version of the Pico W with headers. We don't have photos of that yet. It's coming out in a couple months, um, but uh, you can sign up to be notified when we do get those in. I just don't know exactly when that might be. Uh, but right now, the, the big announcement is the Pico with headers. So update the Pico to add headers and the Pico W, which has added uh, full wireless Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Classic, and Bluetooth Low Energy module uh, to the Pico W um, for a great way to add IoT projects for very low cost with Raspberry Pi hardware. And that's new products. Yay, new, 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 peek out, peek out, moo, moo, moo. <laughs>